6.30 a.m. Tuesday. J. Harvey Kirkbride's curiosity finally got the best of him when he walked out on the front porch of his house at 318 West 4th Street and waved, waved down the next carriage that clattered toward him. The man holding the reins pulled up reluctantly. What's the matter? Kirkbride asked. What's going on? Warning's gone out for people to get out of the downtown area, said the man, struggling to keep the nervous horse from prancing about. That's what all the bells and whistles are about. Water is almost to the tops of the levees, and they're saying downtown's going to get hit bad. Me? I'm heading for the hills in East Dayton. Want to ride along? Kirkbride grinned. This wasn't the first time there had been a high water scare and timid folks started heading for high ground. He shook his head. No, thanks. I'll be all right, but thanks for the offer. The man shrugged and flicked the reins and the horse cantered forward, turned south on Wayne Avenue and disappeared. Kirkbride scratched his chin. Well, if there was going to be some water in the streets, he'd better get down to the office to make sure nothing would be damaged if the floors got wet. There were a number of cases of paper materials, both blank and already printed, near the back door of the Johnson and Watson Company at 131 East 3rd Street, where Kirkbride was a book printer. He ought to get them to the second floor, just in case. Even when, between his house and the Miami Canal, he had to wade through a section of water halfway to his knees that was being forced up through a storm sewer, he wasn't worried. By the time he passed the Schwind Power Building at the triangular corner of 4th, St. Clair, and Kinton Streets, he was well away from the water again. The rush of people heading away from the downtown area had disappeared now, and many people strolled along the sidewalks on their way to work just as they did any other day. Harvey Kirkbride decided that, just like all the other times in the past which he remembered, it was a false alarm. He hadn't taken time to eat at home, so now he entered a little restaurant on East 3rd, almost directly across from his own office. He tapped the raindrops from his derby shook his cravenet, and hung both on a hook near his seat. Coffee? asked the man behind the counter. Uh-huh. Breakfast, too. Think I'll have some bacon strips and a couple of eggs fried sunny side up. Maybe that'll make the sun take a hint and peek through these clouds. The, the cook grunted morosely. Sure getting our share of it these past three days, ain't we? getting so as I forget what sunshine looks like. Okay, bacon and eggs coming up. Mind if I look at your paper? Kirkbride asked. Help yourself. Ain't much in it though, except some stories about them tornadoes they had out in Nebraska. Sure glad we're in a valley here where we don't get bothered too much by winds like that. I went through a tw twister once over in Missouri. Bad, real bad feel a lot safer here. Wife's sister lived here, so the old lady ragged me until I finally give in and we moved here. Now she's always complaining about her sinuses. Guy just can't win, can he? Kirkbride mumbled something, but didn't look up from the paper, and the cook gave him a disgusted look and turned to his skillets. 6.35 a.m. Tuesday. The wagon paused at the top of the hill at North Main Street and Helena Avenue, and the horse snorted impatiently. Both the men, both the man and the woman in the wagon, she holding an umbrella over them, looked tired. In the wagon was a jumble of goods, over which a rumpled tarpaulin had been spread. The woman looked down the Helena Street Hill, eastward toward the Great Miami River, and saw that the low ground of Island Park on the opposite side of the bridge was already under water, and that the expanse of flooding from that point stretched as far as they could see into North Dayton. You were right, Andy, she said. 
All along, you were right, he grunted in affirmative. I only wish, he said, we'd been able to convince more people of it, Finn. Well, a surprising number of them believed you, she said soothingly. He sniffed. Not until the whistles began blowing. They believed them, not me. But now it may be too late for them to get out. They haven't got the time they think. What did the police say when you called them? She asked. She had been upstairs packing the last of the things she wanted to take. When he had called the police department around 4 a.m. to alert them of the danger. Well, they said a flood was possible, he said, but he seemed evasive. They really didn't seem too concerned about it, though. I did get them to admit, he added a bit proudly, that I was the first to call in a warning. I'll bet now they wish they'd been more serious about it all. Well, they can't say we didn't warn them. He popped the reins and the horse began pulling them north on Main Street. No, Finette Fox admitted. That's one thing they'll never be able to say. 